So yeah, today I will um, speak about um, a product uh, called uh, in Atos Cognitive Data Center, but I will more speak about uh, the magic sauce in, in, uh, in the Cognitive Data Center, and it's a theoretical thing. It's a, uh, if I can call it as a weeding between the, the world of uh, operational research and the, the world of uh, AI of, uh, and the machine learnings. First of all, I. Um, I worked a lot on, uh, on machine learning, on operational results in the world of IT with uh, Atos. And um, we saw a lot of, um, uh, of cost in, in IT. And this study, it's uh, really represent the, the, the huge cost of uh, incident in IT domain, in data center, but also uh, depending on the application used by, uh, by the end users and uh, uh, and the infrastructure in the IT domain and so on. So it can achieve, uh, it mean uh, nine k dollar per minute, the cost of incident. So that um, what I uh, what we thought. We we have a lot of bugs with the AI, with big data, with uh, with mathematics. So we can use it to solve this problem and to um, and then to reduce the cost of uh, of incident. So we have two blocks. The first one is about prediction, detection of incidents, and yes, of course, to understand what is the normal behavior in the IT systems and how we can understand this behavior with, uh, with AI and to, to model also uh, a good uh, algorithm that can predict incident, not uh, just anomaly. I will explain that uh, after. And the other blocks is about root cause analysis because yes, we can have a good algorithm, we can predict a lot of things, but if we can, uh, to solve uh, the problem predicted, so it's not interesting in the, in the industrial mode. It's still interesting as um, algorithmic works uh, in theory, but uh, we, we know all that uh, when we do uh, research, it's to solve some uh, real uh, problem, and uh, in this case, is to, uh, to, to reduce the, the cost of, uh, of IT incident. So the magic sauce. So we have yes the part of representation of the data in uh, in data center in the IT. It's very complex to represent the data in data center or in the IT domain. Why? Because yes, we have uh, several data, structured and unstructured data about metrics as CPU, network, uh, memory, and so on. But also we have some semi-structured data as logs, and in the logs also it's very difficult to understand the behavior of logs, because we can have logs coming from infrastructure, it's more structured, but logs coming from application, it's very complex to understand it. And we, we have to use uh, the algorithm to understand this. So we used several uh, methods about time series, regression models, model, random forest, genetic algorithm, Bayesian network. And Still, yes, we understand uh, behavior of one component of, and also of a lot of components, but still we don't identify what, uh, what will be an incident. What is the cluster that if we have uh, those, this anomaly, we can have incident. And our problem is to detect what is um, uh, the good correlation that can give us the definition of an, an incident. So then uh, we obtained several results. We, I was not happy with the result what, uh, what I obtained by all the algorithms tested in, uh, in machine learning. And then I still to, um, uh, to, to test why not combine machine learning with operational research. Because in operational research we have a lot of algorithms that, um, that take into account with uh, constraints and also with objectives. In machine learning, a lot of time we, uh, we still regard just, we regarding just the part of sensitivity, accuracy of algorithm, but we, we, can, we don't take account about the cost, about the margin, about the functional constraints in the system IT in this use case, but for the other use case in the functional IT and also of the margin and cost. So then I tried to combine both algorithms coming from the world of machine, poor machine learning and those coming from uh, optimization results. And in this case, it was about graph coloring. And in the evaluation, still we combine as objectives several functions with different weight. So our algorithm, it takes 
an objective as uh, several functions to evaluate the algorithm, and also it takes into account uh, constraints taking uh, using uh, algorithm for, uh, used in the world of uh, graph coloring. And then um, we matched with yeah what we saw in the past and the, the behavior analytics from uh, from uh, from the idea of machine learning. So just let me to to show you some um, some results about this. When we worked with several algorithm regression, Bayesian network, decision tree, and we used also clustering. The thing yes is to um, to understand uh, if we have if we detect an anomaly. What we will have after? We will have another component that will came in with anomaly and another component and another component. But what is the regroupment that give us that we will have incident? So we obtained results. If I so, if I see just for example the part of sensitivity, we have good sensitivity, but uh, about the accuracy, it was not good. And when we improve the part of accuracy, we lost sensitivity. We used deep learning. We used <laughs> really several techniques in machine learning to, to solve this problem. But still, uh, the problem in data center that uh, you, we have different data and the behavior is not the same. It changed uh, it change quickly. So if we just use machine learning that uh, we learn the behavior that we saw in the past, it's still not sufficient. So we try to, um, to combine with, uh, with the graph coloring approach. Use it, uh, so we based our, um, our algorithm to build a graph with the, the K coloring. Each node will represent uh, application, with, uh, with uh, represent data as CPU, as memory, and we tried to build constraint between this element based on functional constraint coming from the business IT, but also some constraint uh, that for us it was intuitively to, to separate application because we know that if we use, uh, for example, uh, uh, an application that can be uh, used by the, the, the business uh, skills, it's not the same that application used by the the, the people worked in infrastructure and, and so on. So we tried to separate it and to create constraints and to, so, to, 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 have, to, to try to find a solution with graph coloring to, to optimize the cost margin and also to optimize the sensitivity and accuracy. And on the top of this, we add, we learn on this, on the building of the, the graph coloring. So, when we do this, we, um, what, uh, what I, I saw that my sensitivity was really uh, improved. So we passed from uh, 40 to 70 percent. And we're still on the same of, uh, of the accuracy of the false positives. So I tried to, uh, to get outside the part of machine learning and to take just the part of optimization and of graph coloring to represent my data center and to see if I will predict something or if I will have a good, uh, a good understanding of root cause analysis when we have uh, an incident. So still, I, I had a precision on about uh, 20%. So if I take just the part of graph coloring, so the operational results only, I have a bad uh, result. If I take just uh, the model coming from machine learning as a, a regression, random forest, to deep learning, and so on, still I have the same problem. When I improve my sensitivity, I lose my uh, false positive, and uh, vice versa. So, but when I combine both, <laughs> I tried, to, it, I, I had a good result, but I tried also to, uh, to jump in another uh, technique that let me to start by machine learning technique and on the top I use the graph coloring to optimize the solution. Because usually in optimization it's this, we, we try to do some, for example, planning based on what I see now. So this approach was also, was also, were also bad. So the good one, it was, first of all, let me to build my system with my constraint to start to achieve my objectives, and then let me to do learning on how I build my graph and why it works, and to understand the root cause analysis when 
I build my graph color in, I have a good results. And what were the, the pattern that constitute an, an, an incident and also the pattern that constitute a root cause analysis to solve the incident. And that will be the, the magic, uh, the magic sources in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this area. So in operating mode, because still it's, uh, it's very um, uh, magic to, to, to jump from an algorithm to another to try several techniques, but we need something that we can, uh, we can have in real uh, mode, in operational mode, and that works. So just to simplify, now, with my, um, with my techniques and my, my algorithm, I know what is an incident, what is the pattern of an incident, so the cluster that uh, if I have several uh, components with an anomaly uh, detection, so it constitutes an incident. And also I know when I have an incident, what, what is the root cause analysis that match with this incident, so it defined. In real time, we will receive several data separated uh, with in separated environment from infrastructure application uh, and so on so the thing is just to in real in real time it just to compare the with my with what with what i defined as my graph uh, of incident and my graph of root cause analysis and then we can send to alert to uh, to the end user okay now we, we, you will have an incident in eight hours on in three hours because also we um, i used uh, machine learning to learn when I predict incident, what, what, we, what is the mean time when, uh, when this incident uh, will occur. All these things, okay, it's good, but uh, when, you when you deploy solution with machine learning, you have also to ensure um, the, the continuity or the feasibility in, uh, in the future and also in all other year. So, and we don't, uh, the, uh, the, the business need, don't uh, need a data scientists or, or skills on, uh, on statistics, on machine learning to understand that now I will have an incident or my algorithm uh, doesn't work. So that's why I added um, a KPI that for me it's uh, called as prediction quality KPI. This KPI is about um, an agent that, uh, that look at, the, at each time of what you predict and what it's really happened. And also when you solve, what, what is the time uh, it, it takes you to, to solve it. For example, if I predict I will have an incident and it comes in, an hour, in one hour, but it, given, it doesn't give you uh, more time to solve it, it's not good. Because as I said in, 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 at the beginning, you can predict, okay, it's good, but if you can't solve uh, the, the, the prediction, it's not interesting for the for the industrial. So that's why we have this KPI that, uh, as I said, is an agent that uh, see okay you predict something in real time. In real time, it comes and also you you predict it uh, before uh, several hours that uh, that the incident will occur. If this KPI it's um, it go down, so. Still, okay, we predict, but uh, okay, we it didn't occur or, or something like this. So we can retrain the model based on the two approach about to rebuild my K graph coloring and to on the top to train the, the model on this. It takes a lot of time because it takes about um, 25 hours to learn and to, to rebuild the, the model. But in real time, for prediction, it takes just uh, some, um, some seconds. We have about, in, um, in real life, in production, it's about 96% of, uh, of good prediction confirmed. And we still have 4% uh, of, uh, of false positive. Thank you. Thank you.